Perfect. Okay, we're going to take our bands. Overhead, you can take oh, oh, slow pull down. Hello, Michelle. We're just starting. We're exhaling pull down. Good morning, everybody. We're going to take a moment to, I don't have a heavy weight on right now. We're just sort of using these first uh, lap pulls as a way to wake up the shoulders, as a way to wake up the breath. <sighs> so we'll invite our precious body to movement this morning and give it some nurturing in our muscles and our joints and synovial fluid and lymph and all those good things we can influence. If you check out your wrist, your wrists are fairly neutral. They're not going to be absolutely straight here because they're holding on to the band, but they're, they're, uh, they've got some uh, neutral tone to them. They're not wildly bent backwards or forward. All right, your ribs are pulled down a little. And if you need a little more tension, go for it. We're going to do five more. Exhale, four more. Your knees have some softness. Three. Starting with new inhales, getting rid of any old exhale, any old metabolites we don't need. All right, so we are going to lower that down. Take the hands at the lower back and lift up your arms. And there's such an easy temptation when you're doing these kind of stretches to poke the forward head, uh, head forward. So you're going to pull that ear back in line with the shoulder and let it be really just true in your upper body. Three, two, three. Inhale and then exhale. Let that down. Take your band to the back of your body around the shoulder blades. Around the shoulder blades. Your palms are face up. We're going to exhale and press out. And inhale. And as you do this, your neck is soft. If you would like to add on a cue, you can add on heel raises. So when you pull your arms out, you're also lifting up your heels. You exhale and you inhale. Your knees are still soft. You're slowing it down so you have some balance work. You're strengthening those ankles because they might try to go out. Woo! <laughs> that was balance. But you're going to pretend there's a, a pomegranate between your ankles. Each toe has equal weight. You're not just biasing to the pinky toe, which is an easy tendency. Going up. Good. Shoulders are down the back. Exhale. All right, let's try five more. And you see I'm trying to make it slow. Build strength along, along those ankles. Four. Three. Two. And one. And then lower that down. Very good. Now we're gonna take this band underneath our heels. Most of us, we're gonna use two heels. If it's too hard, you can put one heel underneath it. You got it. And keep going, let me see. Jean, perfect, that's my girl. That's right, way to improv, grab those cans of beans. So you can grab anything. Your muscle just wants uh, more stress than it has to be able to adapt. Exhale, pull up. A long time ago, I used to teach uh, some parks and recs classes and we had bottles filled with sand and sand water. So that just lets you know you can use anything. And exhale. They were old uh, plastic bottles, like soda bottles, or so water. Now people drink water, but it was like so long ago. I, don't, I think it was before people had bottled water like we do now. I don't know. <laughs> Seems like a long time ago. Seems like lifetimes ago. Remember when people didn't use to buy bottled water? But anyway, that's how long ago it was. All right, try four more. Three biceps, and let me show you from the side. The shoulders are open. Two. So way to improvise, Jean. And let me know if you need a Dynaband. We can, uh, I can give you a link. All right, let that go for a moment. Take your hands in a band overhead. A towel is another way you can do this. Jean, if you don't have anything, you can take your interlaced finger position and open up that way. So hold that, five, four. You know, I like to mix up the stretches and, and mix up the um, 
the resistance stress that we have. Three, stress in a good way. Two, stimulus. And then one, step back on. Jean, you can use your cans. You can step on your he um, heels in the middle. A little wider is harder. In other words, a little wider. So let's say this were too easy. You can put your heels out wider. Okay. And exhale. And exhale. And exhale. And exhale. You got it. So basically your ears in line with your shoulder, your knees are soft, your shoulders are active, you feel the biceps too. You got it. And Jean, at the top, just make sure your elbows are higher than your wrist. Yes, you got it. Yes, it's for the deltoid. Your wrists are pretty neutral. Good, Michelle, you figured out how the wrist can feel. All right, let's take three more. Knee soft, exhale two. Exhale one more. We're gonna lower that hand down and just take your band out. Jean, you can take one can, heel out. And now this is lateral raise. The exhale is gonna take your arm up. Now you've got some tone to keep the body stable. Two, now I'm gonna give myself more. Three, so if it's too hard, you just Give yourself more slack. Four, good Jean. Five, six, nice. Seven, and the band is slightly ahead of you. Good mother. And let's take 10 on the other side and you just step on that. I'm just gonna change my handle. We'll take 10 on this side, heel on. Now it's just slightly ahead of your body. It's not behind you, definitely. Two, your body is toned to be able to keep from leaning over. Three. And now in the same vein, other foot, other heel means stepping on it, push forward or lift forward. Now it's a frontal raise, so uh, your body's square, your arm goes up, good, one, and then adjust if you need to, two. You're going to about shoulder height or less, three, your wrist is neutral, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to switch up that heel, that hand, ten pulls front. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, good, nine, and then ten. Jean, you can do this with your weight too. You're going to take that band behind you and you're going to put the other hand at your low back. You're going to press up on. I like sometimes with these bands, I like to just hold the whole thing. Just find whatever works for your wrist. The main goal is nothing hurts your joints, but that you can make that elbow extend and lengthen back down. Generally, the hands, it's gonna feel better if the hand's facing you somehow. This bottom arm is open down the back. Five, your ears in line with the shoulder best you can. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 
14. 15. Now we're going to just switch it up. So you take this one, this one's down. We're going to push up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You guys look great. 11, you see how tempting it is to kind of lean into that arm, but you're keeping your ribs over your pelvis evenly on both sides. 13, knee soft. 14, a little bit of rib uh, pulling down. And 15, let those arms get some blood flow. In fact, I'm just gonna take this out of the way and I call it laundry sleeves or sleeves just drying in the wind. If this, oh, let me do that one, okay. Sorry, so it's kind of like you're um, drying Clothes on a clothesline, and your arms are just swaying. Four, three, and two, and then one. And we're going to let that down, and we're going to mix it up. So you can take a set of push-ups any way you want to. One option is on the wall. The further away you are, the harder it is. One option is on a counter, or you can get on your knees. It doesn't matter to me, because I want you to feel like you got it. Let's try 15 reps. Just to demo, I'll do it on the floor on modified knees and you're in one long line. Now the main thing is not that your nose touches the floor, but that your shoulder blades are down the back. Keep going, I'm just talking. Your ears are in line with your shoulder. I feel a little pubic bone pulling up sensation in my abs to keep my low back from swaying because gravity is pulling my low back down and it wants to pull my ribs down and it wants me to sag in my low back, but I don't want it to. So I've got a little tone underneath my ribs to keep my ribs pulling up, my pubic bone pulling under. I'm not jamming my glutes though. All right, let's try five more. Good, Michelle, four. Uh, that looks good, Laura. Three, looks good, Jean. Nice, Betty. Two, I like it. It's a good plank when you've got a good push-up. Now, if you can take a child's pose, great. If you're on the wall, Michelle, take a stretch, with, interlace your fingers, doing good. Inhale, and then exhale to come back up. And when you're ready, we're going to grab your heavier weights because we're going to do bicep curls with your heavier weights. Jean, what you have was working. That looks good. Who's got my other weight? Oh, it's on my, my coffee's on it. Okay, so now grab your weight. You can hammer curl it or you can palm up curl it. Just find what's comfortable. When you lengthen, you're making sure your elbows don't bend backwards. From the side, your chest is open. And four. And five. And six. And seven. And eight. And nine. And ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15. Now I'm going to lower these down and use your um, thighs, safe muscles. Take an interlaced finger position. We'll do this one. 5, 4, 3, 2, inhale and exhale lower that down and we're going to take a lighter weight so for example anywhere from three to eight i'm going to use six let's say um, if you need a sip take a sip knee soft now a lateral raise we have a weight per hand and it's okay if you don't know if you choose the exact way to create fatigue in the final reps. Just do a few more reps or just do a few less reps. Ideally, you're fatiguing in the final repetitions with good form. 
and what we're also doing when we stand uh, with those muscles that we need to have our body in the right alignment is we're teaching our body good posture patterns so that when you deviate during your day, uh, it's more noticeable to your body. Your posture recognizes, hey, this is really deviated. I'm sitting crooked in my car. Let me at least get my booty cheeks even, or I'm standing extremely crooked in the line at the store. So what you're doing is helping to train the body just by putting yourself in the good positions during classes. Not that you can't deviate from normal, but you wouldn't want to hang out excessively in a slouch, for example, for hours. It's going to create some pain. Some adaptations that we don't want. We would like to help our body adapt the way we do want. 108. Okay, let's do three more. I'm just kidding. Take two more. Exhale. Take one more. Now, if you need more, please do more. If you feel fatigued in those reps, that was good. Take that and take one arm over your ear, kind of like half moon in yoga. And if you would like, cross that little foot. You've got that whole lateral line. And I like to add these rotations because first you can say, where am I tight today? What do I need to stretch more of? So there, that's a little tighter for me, so I'll stay up. Good. All these are great for the shoulder though. We want healthy shoulders. All these are great for posture in the low back and the breath, which begets energy. And come on up to the other side. Now you can take your arm over. I like to add this foot. Now feel free to add your little rotations. Breathe into the rib cage. Five, four, three, two, and oh, those feel so good. It's hard to come out. And then gently let that out. We're going to take an overhead press, which means we're going to do this. Um, that, this can be done seated, but we're going to do it standing if you can. If you feel like you need some stability help, get in a chair. But I'm going to say anywhere from three to eight pounds that you're doing an overhead press. Your elbows, <clears throat> it's kind of like they're on a shelf. They fit here, and then you push up. Also, if you have a low ceiling, like if you're working out in the basement, you can sit. All right, you got it. Knee soft. Two. And good. Your arms are slightly ahead of you. You're not letting them drift behind you. Exhale, four. Now, anytime your arms are overhead in class or in your day, there is a tendency for the low back to get more inwardly sway, more lordotic. So I have a little bit of tone, maybe 5%, right around my ribs. So I don't lean my lower back um, more sway. Uh, head also easily pokes forward, and you don't want that. So you have that ear in line with the shoulder. You're training your fascia how to accommodate changes in the body limb positions. Developing kinesthetic awareness of where your body parts are in space. And I like what I see. Now I'm shooting for five more. Good. Do you have the room, Betty? Just barely right for your ceiling. Okay. Three. Two. One. Lower those down. Perfect. And what we'll do is take a tricep stretch, right hand, uh, sorry, left hand to the elbow and, and a lat uh, lean. And pat yourself on the back, good. And then go to the other side, hand to elbow, go to the other side. Good, Jean, three. All right, take another inhale. And then exhale, gently come back. Now a heavier weight. So for example, I'm gonna take two 10 pound weights because what we're gonna do is this bent over row, but look how my back is. See how flat my back is. So I'll show you again. So if you have your weights, I'm not rounded, I am flat. I'm kind of lifting up the booty, lifting up the sternum. I'm not parallel to the floor in my back, but I am supported, supported flexion. Definitely not a tortoise shell. Uh-huh, exhale four. 
Exhale, five. Now you're gonna feel some biceps, that's just fine. Six, rear shoulders. Seven, eight, nine. Jean, can you see how your arms are up here and can you just put them here? Better, there you go. Kind of lift your booty. And so instead of being a little round, can you lift your booty and lift your sternum? Lift your heart, like that. Instead of that, yeah, kind of lift up your booty. There you go. All right, all right, try five more. That's it, and let your hands be closer to your ribs instead of your shoulders. Gee, yeah, there you go. You got it, slow and controlled, two. Exhale, and one. Good, Laura, and then lower those little weights. We're just gonna shake that out for a moment before we take some rear flies for the rear shoulders. One of my favorite areas to get because they don't get a lot of attention. The front shoulders draw forward with our daily task because our eyes are forward. So we're going to make it easier for our body to have good posture by strengthening the rear delts. So now we've got somewhere between two and eight pounds, I'd say. Um, because it's a longer lever, it's a little lighter weight. So I've got this Lift your heart, and then I'm gonna show you from both sides. So it's out, and I'm gonna show you from this side. Out. You see how it's kind of a long lever? But there is a little softness to the elbow. Okay, Michelle, that looks good. Betty, looks good. Yep, Jean, that's right. And just make sure to lift your sit bone, Jean, just so you're really long in the back. Uh, you, you look solid. That's great, Laura. Okay, it's like you're, a friend of mine has an analogy that you're riding a, a, a motorcycle. I don't ride motorcycles, but uh, it's like your your thighs are strong. Oh, a mountain bike could probably be the same, huh? Your, th your thighs are strong here. Lift up your arms to about T. All right, this is long lever. Three, two, exhale, one, and then lower that down. Good. All right, we're gonna take the arm up and over and just repeat that stretch rotation. Five half moons. Four, three, two. Feels so good. On the other side, side lat, this is posture. And then this makes it easier for us to stand upright longer. It makes it easy for the shoulders to be healthy, easier for the low back to be healthy. Breathe into that rib cage. And then one. Okay, if you have a Donna band or a pair of socks, whatever you have, just put them on the floor. And a Donna band or a pair of socks or a cloth, a washcloth. And you're gonna take one foot and pick up that sock. Now, there's a few things happening. I'm strengthening the foot arch. I'm strengthening this glute, okay? So pass it to this hand and lower your foot back down. Do it again. You're gonna lift it up, take it to your hand, lower. So this is strengthening. Now, I'm really trying to strengthen my arches because a lot of um, times it's just so easy to get weak feet and dropped arches. And there's what your whole body is on you're standing on your arches so we want to protect them i'm strengthening my arch because i have my foot in that sock or that dynaband or that washcloth six seven good eight yep nine these tiny little exercise, these tiny little muscles help us so much and they don't usually get much attention. Now the other one for 10. And you're trying to actually make it to your hand. Two. Three. Four. This glute's getting some balance. Five. Six. Seven. 
eight. So most classes I try to do something with the feet, mobility, toe dexterity, something. Just seen so many issues that over the years could have been prevented. So now you can get rid of your socks and all you're gonna do is lift and spread your toes, lift and spread your toes, lift and spread your toes. If you're ever having trouble spreading out that big toe, put a rubber band around both big toes to spread them out as you do this. So, all right, now you have space between your toes and we're gonna go down. I'll meet you on the floor with your bands and your weights and we're gonna start with our seated position. We do a lot of balances in the other classes, so I am going to let that be enough for the what we've done with the lower body. Grab your band and look, let it go around your feet and then cross your band. And then, good. And then pull. Let me see what he got. Uh, you know what, Jean? You may like to do a bridge pose because it does strengthen the back. So bridge, bridge if you would like to. And exhale, yeah. You know how you put your feet on the ground? Yeah. All right, you got it. And you're lifting up through your torso. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then uh, jeans stay up. We'll take external rotation. Your elbows are by your side. This is uh, one of these that's usually offered when people get injuries, but I love to do it prehab instead of rehab. Wrist are straight, very small. And 10. You got it, nice Jean, your level. Uh-huh, that's it. Yeah, that motion is still good for you. You can do this without a weight during your day. Nice. Okay, and then um, Jean, if you want to come up and grab your cans, you can do this with your can and a bicep curl and a little crunch. Oops, uncross them. And you got it. Now, if you want five more, take it. If you need to come out, do. But this would be 16, 17. If you lift the arms, it's a little uh, more challenge. Hey, good. I like it, Michelle. Strong biceps, girl. And then gently come up. Nice. And, Jean, I think you'll be okay if you just take it like this and work the arms as your weight or with your, yeah. Hands up. And then exhale. It's not quite any gravital. Um, you can hinge over and do it, but I think you'll still feel that delt. But at least you'll do more anterior. We're feeling more rear, so it's still the delt. Four, three, two, and one. Now take a breather. I'm going to have us uh, lie down and do, with our heavier weight, a chest press. So it's gonna be like, for example, I'm gonna grab my tens, but you can do whatever what you want. You can do your cans. Um, if you need a sip, please take it. I know I haven't queued that in a while. So that by end of class, you had about six to eight inches, uh, or six to eight ounces of water. All right, so you're taking your head down, your feet on the flat on the mat and then you push up your hand weights towards each other and then you bend the elbows you push up and you exhale inhale and exhale inhale and exhale in and out in and out 
in and out in good now just notice your ribs are on the mat you're not low back arching let's take five more but you're kind of in control of your reps because it, you want to feel fatigue in the final rep so if you're feeling fatigued and you're done you're done uh, let's do three more two now let those weights out of the way and you can take a full body stretch reach through your arms reach through your legs we are going to do a fly and it's it may be a lighter weight uh, which it's going to look a little like this okay it may not be a lighter weight you know it may be like oh okay that one took me hard long time but usually a little lighter because we have got this longer lever so inhale open the main thing here and the next up close hug a tree the main thing here is you're not letting your weights touch the floor exhale good inhale and exhale four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen Okay, now right now you may be saying, I'm feeling some fatigue, I need to stop. Or maybe you want to try five more. 16, or maybe two more. 17, ribs are down. 18, good. I like how you're not letting the weights touch the floor. 19, that's how elbow hyperextension occurs. So I did 20. If you need a couple more, that's great. If you need a couple less, that's great. Take your arms out. Shift your arms and your legs. Walk that little low back. Oh my God, it feels so good. And then I'm going to grab a roller. Mine's way over there, three feet away from me, which sometimes stops me from getting it, but I'm going to be brave and get it. So if you'd like to, grab your roller. You can do a lot of this without the roller, but it definitely is more effective with the roller. All right, let's do swans because you guys know how important I know that. I think that is. All right. I know it is. All right, lie on your belly. This is going to be a hyper, uh, sorry, extension for the thoracic spine. You can do this on the floor if you don't have a roller. It is just a little more oomph. Pinky press down. Inhale, lift. You got it. Betty, it looks amazing. Turn it up. Good, Laura. And up and down. Great, Jean. You can go up and down if you want on the floor. Yep, there. That looks good. Up. And then let's take three more. You're also training your body. Hey, this is an extension. It's good to be here. This is normal for me. This feels great. I'm going to keep this in my body. Ten. Holding up. Nine. Eight. Ah, oh, it looks great. Seven. I like the head position. Six that I see on people. Good, Laura. That was even better. Five. Four. Belly pulls up. Three. Really looks good. Two. I like the pinky hand into the roller. And exhale. Relax for a bit. If you need a child's pose anytime, please take it. I'm going to offer a handoff on this one. When you're ready, lift up. Shoulder blade down the back. Now, one arm is going to press hard while you touch one hamstring. The other hand pushes hard. Now notice how your pelvis is level. We want to keep it level. You could add on a rotation if you can keep your pelvis even. If your, if your pelvis is really unstable or kind of rocky and this rotation makes your pelvis uh, really heavily weighted on one side, just do the arm. Don't rotate. Or just stay swan. Let's do four, three, Two, shoulder blade down the back. Now both arms are going to be back on the floor or the roller and hold. Ten, 
that and breathe in the upper back tell your fascia this is where we're going hon we love this upper back extension we're going to stay tall our body is open in the front and strong in the back this is normal this is baseline and then let go with the child's pose child's pose could be arms on top of the roller if you want And then we've got some fun and exciting uh, planks. So either with your roller or without, but I'm gonna put the plank at the bottom half of my body over the shins, under the shins. Grab a sit if you'd like. Elbows down. Now, I like to toe in on these so that a couple reasons. One, it feels good on my tibialis anterior, the shin muscle, which how often does it get stretched in a tension? And two, it gets off my tibia, which is a bone, which doesn't want to be rolled out. So toes in, pull your knees under. Feel free to adjust any as much as you need. Pull the knees under. Pull the knees under. Pull the knees under. Good. Yeah, you can make them baby if you want to, or you can make them real big. You guys choose three, two, one and recover. Now we're gonna take um, obliques here, which is gonna be knees to one corner, knees to one corner. And um, if you ever need a backup plan and you just need stability, like Laura, if you're feeling tweaky ever, you can just stay real linear. But if you're okay, you can pull your knees to the corner, right? So if anything's unstable, you just stay real linear and equal weighted and all those good cues. But if you want some variety, take a little oblique. Now you're also rolling out those peroneal muscles, those fibularis muscles on the side of the shin, which I love anything that helps down there. I've had shin splints in my life and cramps in those peroneals, so anything I can do down there seems to help. Helps with ankle mobility. All right, so how about four more if you can? Four, three, two, one and recover sip if you need i'm going to have us do some pikes which is hips up knees long hold on yeah okay <clears throat> lengthen i oh, know we have to adjust our shirts and pilates if you're doing it right you're losing some clothes so lift up Rollovers or a rollback is one of them in the lift. Now your knees are long. This is like a or an upside down V. You pull your belly in. My toes are facing each other, so I'm rolling up my tibia and my tib tibialis interior and my muscle, not my bone. Four, three, two, recover when you're ready. The next one is going to be a pipe to a corner, plank, pipe to a corner, plank, pipe to a corner, plank. So it's going to be a lot of obliques. It's going to be great. Let your elbows down. Now you're going to take a lift up and back down. And a lift up and back down. And up and up and up. And up. Okay, try four more. Four, three, two, one, and recover. Ah, boy, great job. Okay, side plank for a moment just to give those muscles a break on the roller. Hold your body up and just do static. 10, 9, good, 8, that looks so good, 7, your shoulder weight's down the back, your hips are lifted, your ribs have a little tone right here, 4, 
three, two, lower that little hip. Pause for a moment. We're gonna build strength, inhale, come back up, lift up. Okay, if you can, go up a little higher and hand to your hip and up a little higher, paint that sky. Now this arm's still working, we're doing great. Three, if you need, rest. Four, if you can. Five more, that was five. Six, good, and I know it's hard, you're doing great. Seven, work within your safe limits. Eight, but feel that bottom oblique now. Nine, 10, now lower your hip, not your arm, and then get your arm unweighted. Let's switch it up. Adjust any kind of mat you need to be comfortable and happy. We don't want your bones to hurt for one second. It was the best thing, my, one of the best lessons I got from my Thai yoga teacher in the Bahamas is don't let your body hurt for one second. It's not worth it. So you're gonna care for your body. All right, this time up and just hold. 10, nine, eight. Your ribs have a little touch, tuck six, head against a wall, five, four, hip lift, three, two. Now lower, I'm just gonna move a bit so I'm more in your screen. And we're gonna do the up and over rainbows as a possibility. So come up, now over your ear, and then let your hand come back to your pelvis and then up, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. God, you're doing great. Really good. Lower down. Now this is gonna be under our feet. Sip if you need. We're gonna do just a little bridging and then we're gonna do some fascia release. Feet on. And really, Jean, you could just do this on the floor, up and down, low back, getting some mobility. You're as young as your spine. So one thing we do every class is spinal flexion, spinal extension, lateral flexion, and rotation, and axial extension. Basically, we put the body, the spine, in all of its places it's supposed to go to keep it young. Think of a a mountain lion or a lion or a, an animal in the woods that moves agilely. That's what we want to keep our spine like. Okay, we stay up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. If you want a bonus push out then, if you don't want anything to do with that, then just stay put. Five, four more, three, and then lower, really good. All right, perfect. All right, we're gonna have some fun with that um, roller. And Jean, if you want to do a normal hip stretch, you can. If you wanna do a hip stretch on the roller, you can. Take your ankle to your thigh. So Jean, if you want to do a hip figure four, you got it. And you got it. Now you're just gonna say, how are my hips feeling? Like what is feeling? So right now I'm kind of leaned back, but you can also go forward and see wh where is my tension? And then keep breathing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. All right, and then Jean, you're on the stretch. You can switch your ankle to thigh. Now you're gathering information. How does this hip feel? Is it tight near the sacrum? Is it tight near the greater trochanter? Is it tight near the ilium? If I sit up, is that more effective? So find out. 
Keep the breath going. What I like is you're not tightening up your shoulders. You're not tightening up your jaw. Good, so I've got a little bit more tightness around my greater trochanter. So that's why I'm deviating this way, but you might be more towards the sacrum. Good, and you're breathing. You're keeping that energy flow. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, inhale, and then exhale. Perfect. Jean, do you remember how to take a quad stretch? Go to your side and take your side quad stretch. We're going to take a thigh roll. Yeah. So, Jean, lie down, take your hand to your foot. You've got it. And if you would like to take a quad roll, you're on top of your roller, your thighs are, I mean. Toe out. Toe in. And now if you feel something really tight, you can stay. You can go neutral. If you need it harder, bend your knees or bend and straighten. You can internal out, external in. Good. Bias the right quad more. And then, Jean, if you want to switch legs, and those of you that are rolling up the roller, you can see if you bias the left quad more. Get that front pocket too, because it's a TFL, it's a booger sometimes. And then just make sure you're evening yourself up. Find the places that are sore. Is one quad tighter than the other? Is the outer quad? Yep, that TFLR is usually a good one. You're on the other side. Good, Jean. Make sure you're evening up. If you need more work on the left, do it. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Uh, take a little bit of a ham, uh, sorry, uh, not hamstring, IT. So, Jean, you're going to lie on your back and lift your leg in the air and cross the midline a little. We're gonna roll out that IT. Yep, there you go, good Jean. Now, the harder is to take that bottom foot off. A lot of people can't do that, so don't force yourself. That other foot could be down. You can kind of get more hamstring if you roll back or more quad if you roll forward. 10, nine, eight, and you're doing some uh, planks uh, with your upper body. You see how you're toned up here. You're not just collapsing. Five, breathing, four. This is the best way I can think of to give yourself a massage. Three, two, and why don't we see what's going on with that other IT. So Jean, switching your leg, and we're going to switch our leg on the IT. All right, how's that leg feeling? Ten and nine and eight and seven and six and five, four, three, two. Inhale, and exhale, perfect. 
All right, Jean, you can take a lat stretch, something like that. You guys are gonna roll out that lat. This is one of my um, favorites because you think that it wouldn't do much and it does so much. So if you've ever had shoulder tightness and if your eyes are in the front side of your body, this one's a useful one. All right, so you've got this lat and it, the biggest muscle in your back and it twists right here because this is really a hard area to roll out on the rest of the lap, but you can get it here. Now, I also like to test, what's my rear delt doing? So if you roll back, you say, oh, what's that rear delt doing? What's the area around the scapula? So you may have something different. Oh, right on that scapula. There you go. Breathe into the side, whichever you're doing, a stretch or your fascial roll. Five, four, three, two. Get rid of some of that sticky adhesive quality, right? And um, Jean, before you go, we're just gonna test. Can you guys just see how it feels? Ah, feel that difference? And then we're gonna get the other side. Good, see how much cleaner? All right, great. Here we go. All right, we got this. Now, what's this side feel like compared? What's your dominant side feel like compared to your non-dominant? Or, you know, sometimes your body's holding this history of what's, what's happened. So you could have uh, maybe an old injury that's making some muscle tight. Keep the breath fluid. So when you find that you're holding your breath, see if you can exhale and, and get through it. It's not that you're trying to make yourself um, stay in a painful place. You just wanna see if the exhale can release that and see if your deltoid has any issue. See if your scapula, see if there's anything on that scapula. So you have permission to go back here and roll it. We're not being heavy. You're good, Jean, you're doing great, yeah. And you can rotate left and right, Gene, or rotate down and forward because that'll get your back and that'll get your uh, external rotators. All right, so just, if you have a, a really intense spot, just hang out on it for about 90 seconds. Otherwise, five, four, three. Okay, I've got a good one. When I got my new bike and my handlebars were a little too big, I hit a tree, went down my left shoulder, and it's still telling me. All right, five, even though it doesn't hurt during the day, I can feel it here, four, three, two, one. Okay, fabulous. Now what we're gonna do is take a Shavasana, but if you would like to take this on your roller, it's a great little chest shoulder opener that's passive. If you're on this, uh, Jean, you're welcome to lie, and even you can put your arms like this if you want, but see how you're getting a chest shoulder stretch? Now you can put your feet together, let your knees go wide and relax. All right, let everything relax. And just for a moment, let yourself be full of the gratuity that your body has been healthy enough to do this movement today. And anyone who's experienced, experienced illness or injury knows that for the body to do what it did today is such a blessing. It's such a moment of appreciation. Our body was able to do this. And give yourself a sense of appreciation to the arms, the legs, the shoulders, the ribs, the abs, the back. Tell your body it's just great to be here in this open shoulder chest expansion. Let your breath go to your heart field. Letting the breath go to your heart field is going to open up the uh, reception to all of the other things we have to be appreciative of today. Notice how good it feels to breathe. If you're not congested, that's a wonderful thing to be appreciative of. If you don't have a deviated septum, if you're breathing freely into your lungs. Fill those beautiful lungs with breath, precious breath, precious breath. 
Notice how your mind feels, giving thanks to your mind for getting us here today. Your nervous system, giving it healthy, feeling, nurturing. Notice how your lymph was today, healthy, keeping you well. Give yourself a sense of good wellness, high vibration. High frequency wellness. And then let your eye, let your fingers and toes wiggle until you're coming up to a seated position. And we're going to do a little meditation of segment intending, which is where you create the path for your next few hours. So just for a moment, sit in that wonderful Sukhasana, which is just a joyful place, a comfortable, easy place. You can place your hands on your heart and open up to all of the joys. This is going to open up your ability to see all the precious gifts in front of us. We have shelter, food, water, fresh air. Most of us have a beautiful view very close to us outside. Just notice all that you have to be appreciative of. And your eyes and your ears, your feeling, your smelling are all going to be able to be heightened awareness to receive all of the gifts in front of us. It's a bhakti meditation and we're doing this with segment intending. So see yourself, visualize yourself, imagine yourself just enjoying things as if you're a child or you've just been dropped down into your day for the first time and you see all these beautiful things in front of you. Hear them, smell them, feel them. Whenever you're ready, let your eyes open and come back into the room with much appreciation and joy. May you guys have a great day. I'm so glad to see you. I'll get to see you tomorrow. And then we're doing Thursday, Friday as a big food day. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.